All right, so now, you are going to have to do one of these. Um, you are going to have a, a parametric. The hardest part I find on a final like this is constantly changing your mode, your windows, and everything for your calculator. This is going to put you back in mode parametric. And if you're using cosine and sine, if you're using something that uses cosine and sine, your T has to go from 0 to 360. Make sure you're also in degrees. And your step for T will be like 15 degrees. Also, keep track of where this starts and give me orientation. I'm going to put the orientation on this. Just keep track of, track of where it starts and give me orientation. You did? One, two, three, and we did the yeah. that's right. Did we do the baseball player? Uh, no, no. Okay, so let's start with this. This is a great one that you might see again. Okay, a baseball player hits a pitch three feet high. So, what, in other words, when it comes to the plate, it meets where his arm is with the bat, so it's three feet off the ground. Huh? That's not great. Oh, you have this? I think it's Oh, am I missing some questions? No, because this is five, but it's not Okay. So he's, he's actually standing, you know, with his hands at bat, so that's three feet off the ground here. That's a vertical change. I, on your formula sheet, you do get the setup for this. You just won't have wind speed on yours. You can they do away with the wind speed. But you will have this, plus three. So he uses his velocity. Make sure you put your T, <coughs> cosine and sine. Make sure you're in degree mode. Again, three feet above. Anything that affects a vertical would be three feet above. Here's your pull of gravity to bring it back down. Remember, the key to this is three decimals. It has to be parametric, because that's what gives you your two equations. Now, when you do this, um, I need to see your equations. I need to see where you are. So I show you I'm here, and that I am going to be 370. I, I don't even know what this says. Something's wrong with like my computer here versus my computer at home. I must have a different mic Microsoft or mic mic Word or something because it changes all my things. So if you show me that you're going to clear this fence, your fence is how big? 10 feet? Um, how big is your fence? 10 feet high? Show me approximately, maybe you can get a little bit more detailed in this. Let's pull this up. Let's, let's pull this up. This is a good one to do rather than me. Doing this whole thing. So we're in parametric, we're in degrees, so we're going to pull this up. So we're 118. And this way, make sure you put your T. Cosine, 38. 118. Those have to be exactly the same. Sine, 38. All this has to be the same right now, except for sine and cosine. Sorry. And then plus 3, minus 16 squared, t squared. Okay, so let's take a look at your window. Now, your t-step has to change. You're only going from about 0 to maybe 10 seconds, 8 seconds. Your t-step, keep it small. Keep it 0 0.3, 0 0.5. Let's even keep it 0 0.3. I even read 0.3. Well, because it's this, what that does is it says like how many steps you should take. So now maybe it says, oh, maybe 0.5 or maybe 0.3. So how do you see the wave moving T min and T max? What do you mean by T min and T max is time. This is your time. So you're going to start at zero. Mm -hmm. And maybe how long will it take for your ball to hit the ground? 10 seconds, 8 seconds. And if this is small, keep your T set small. These x mins and y mins have to be at zero. x max, that's my x line. 
I, I'm already checking 373 to my tenth, right? So I'll make it 400. And here's my zero again. And I don't know how high does the ball go in the air. Maybe 100 feet in the air. I'm not really sure. As long as I can see this come down. Now, I can't see it hit the ground. So bless you. So bless you. If I wanted to see this hit the ground, if that was my question instead, like how, uh, how far away before it hits the ground, then all I have to do is change my window and increase this. So go to 500. It's only a window. I need to see this parabola turn. Now, all I care about in this problem is when he is at 373 feet when he is at 373 feet away from him. There's a fence. Does he go over that fence? Does he get a home run? So here's what your point three does. It makes it a little bit tighter in here. I'm only going point three. So if I go point five, it might take me a little longer to get there. There's a little uh, lighter. Go on, Mrs. Warren. Yes? No, I did not. Is this, is this is 340 more. Oh, no, the, the, no one has a cast to come here. Well, what's your name? Mm -hmm. So they're not in my class either. You might have the wrong room. They're not in my class. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, then, then I'm sure they're administrator because it's not me. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Oh, boy, what a day. <sighs> so now, we come down here, we get a little closer, we passed it. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. So now watch, watch, guys, watch. At 362, look. At 362, your, your ball is 42 feet in the air. At 390, your ball is 25 feet in the air. So what happened at 373? You cleared that fence, right? But if you want to get more exact, how did we say to do this? Go to your table. So maybe like about at 4. Start your table set at 4. Do point zero zero one. You're looking for S to be closest possible to 373. Right here. So here's my time. My time is at 4.012. My X value was 373.02. I want to know what my Y value is. This is the important part. So I take a look at my Y value. My Y value is here. 36.926. This is the one. Is this greater than 10? And yes, he hits the home run. Because you had some wiggle room in here, even after his 373, he still cleared the 10 foot fence, right? So by far, he hits his home run. Well, if you are able to uh, practice getting the equation and make the shape of the graph like set up, because you can't do like that other part, you need to go to this part. Yes. Yeah. Give me the equation. Make sure you give me the equation. Make sure you do this. Give me your window. But I'm going to be in here. If there's, if there's a reason why you can't see your window, call me over. If that's the reason that you can't do I can't show you how to do the problem, but if you're having a problem with your window, so, like, is the problem that you can't place it, or you can't tell where yeah, the I don't know. Know. Every, They were kept trying to kick people out of the building, so they thought I was one of the people that they were kicking out, so they kicked me out. I came back and thought, said I had to go get my body, and then I went back to Wait, why were they people out? So I had to walk through that hallway to get to my locker, so then they were like, you too, and then I went to the Wow, they were kicking you out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll do this. No, it's only when he's like, too scared. I think he's so scared of you. That's a fact. Anyway, um, yeah, but it's one. I have a... Ah, please, please, please. Okay. Okay, hang on one second. Spotlight is on, Andrew. 
So, um, so what part can't you travel? The part like on going to the thing where it's seeing where it turned. I don't know what that means. Okay, so actually all we're looking for is this piece right here. We want to know, we want to know, if you ever see at a, at a baseball game, right? Mm -hmm. There's a fence mm -hmm. beyond the field. Yeah. So to hit a home run, usually it says like how many feet to the fence. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for instance, for this guy, it's 373 feet away. Okay. But he also has to be able to have his ball high enough so that it goes over the fence, right? Mm -hmm. If it hits the fence, he doesn't get a home run. So this is key. We want to know when this says 373, how high is this fence? His ball needs to clear this. I want to know, is this, will he clear a 10-foot fence? How high is his ball right now? So when we trace this, if we just say trace. We're tracing this here. This is what we're looking at, this X value. See this X value right here? Uh -huh. His ball is coming this way. It's going up and coming down to, hit, to, to make a home run. Right now, right here, he's at 334 feet away from him. Mm -hmm. But when I go one more, he's at 362. I still didn't hit 373. I go one more, according to mine, I'm at 390. Mm -hmm. So now, his ball went more than 373 feet. But look where he is at 390. He's 25 feet in the air. Here's his little fence down here, right over here. Did he clear that home run? Yeah. Yes. So my point is this. If you have enough leeway that you can show me two pieces and that you can clearly say he clears the fence, I'm fine. If it's very exact, then you might need to get a little bit more exact in here. This is where your key step comes in. This key step was set at point three. So every point three, this is going to change on me. Mm -hmm. If you make your key step too small, the bless you, it'll take, this will go too slow, or it'll be kind of bumpy looking or it's lines. It won't, it won't be smooth. Okay. But I can always find this in my table. What I do in my table is this. Because I need to get three decimal places, I say, okay, let me start here at 4.2. So what? I go to table set, I start at 4.2. I increment 0, 0, 0, 0.001. That gives me every three decimal places. I'm looking for this guy to say 373, my X. So maybe I just have to keep scrolling up, scrolling up. I need that to say 373. It's not going to take me that long. I don't know if your calculator does the same as mine. Like if I find this takes me too long, maybe I'll jump my thing up a little bit more. But I should be able to get to 373 eventually. This might take me a while. So maybe I'll just change my table set to be, um, right here. So I'm looking for 373. It means it's coming the other way. And now I find it. So there's my time. There's my this. There's where my ball is. My ball is still almost 37 feet in the air. If it's 37 feet in the air, it's certainly clear the 10 foot fence, right? So I by far hit that home run. Okay. All right. Um, your exponential ones, they all follow this format. Believe it or not, even the ones with the principal and the uh, time, the principal thing, this follows this format. There's your A, your initial value. There's your rate. There's your time. It all follows this format. So whenever you have one of these, you're going to put your initial value here. Initially, we started with 500. We, in this case, we want to triple. This says three. There's my rate. And I want to triple every hour would be X. Every five would be a cycle. So if I looked at my table, 
at the zero, I'm gonna have zero. At the at nothing. At the one, or I start with 500. At the at the zero, I'm gonna have 500. At the one, I'm gonna have it's gonna increase, but it's not gonna go 1500 until I hit five hours from now. So at the five hours from now, I'm gonna have 15. I don't wanna have them in here. So I have a cycle. And all you have to do with these guys, you can put them in your y equals, you can take them off your table to find your y. You can do them one at a time. This this x is where you're, it's just keep track of what you're putting, you're putting hours in there. Just keep track of what your denomination is. Hours, weeks, months, years, just keep track. They always have to be the same. So when they say one day, one day has to be converted to hours. One week has to be converted to hours. And that last one, yeah, you can leave that as a scientific number. That's a lot of bacteria that down over that time. Hello? Which one? This one? See? Why it was nine oh it got cut off somehow. Ninety seven thousand five hundred and thirty three point something. I don't know. Not cut off. Like I said, something's weird with my my words. I don't know. Some of them work, some of them come out weird looking. So when you do like you know for that one it triples every five hours, you yes. put like four or five, why do you just put one number in If it that. triples every hour. Every hour, time is X. Oh, okay. Every four, X over four. Okay. But again, they all work off of that increase, decrease. If you have, such as the next guy, um, a population decrease, it still works off of this. Look. <laughs> this is what I started with, 88,000. I need to end up with 75,000. Here's my rate. My rate is keep decreasing. It didn't say half, right? It didn't say a quarter. But it gave me a percent. That's 1 minus my R. I don't know what my R is. Over time. And how many years is this? 10. I got to solve for R. What kind of number is R going to be? A decimal. A really small one, isn't it? Because isn't my rate always a percent that I convert to a decimal? So it's really small. So remember, this guy only belongs to that. Divide this out. You can leave it this big. You can reduce it. Get rid of the zeros. At least make it 75 over 88. Make it doable. Now, if this said that this guy was equal to x squared, how would I solve if it says x squared? Square root. So this says to the 10th power, I take the 10th root. In your calculator, you're going to put a 10. You're going to go to math. Then you're going to go to the one that has the x there. And then you're going to plug this in. Your rate has to be really, really small. It's going to be like point oh something or other. Point oh one five eight something. If I move the decimal, it's a little bit more than 1%, 1.5% or so. Rates are small. Working so far. Do you have this one? That's all you have. Okay. All right. You guys are not going to see this in the limit, so I'm not worried about that. And all right. So now let's go to seven. Why didn't see a couple of these? Oh, at least one. All right. How do you recognize this? 
First of all, I will put it in my calculator. But I still don't know how to get this to my calculator. So that tells me get everything to one side. Why are they taking this? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So I've got to put this in my calculator. So that means I have to move everything to one side. Plus, whenever you solve a quadratic equation, don't you have to get everything to one side when you have the descending axis? Get everything to one side. Now, I, on your test, you have no multiple choice. I put some there so that you kind of recognize what I'm looking for. These guys, so if I graph this in my calculator, this is what I'm talking about. You're going to have to change your mode. Change your mode back to function. Doesn't matter what you leave it at. I would always just do a zoom fix just to get back to a normal graph before you even bother doing anything. Zoom fix gets you back to a normal graph. Put this guy in. So that's squared plus 5x minus 12. Oh my goodness. This is just like not my day here today. Don't they know I'm having a bad day? Huh. All right. It's looking for my solution set. Where do I find my solution set? First of all, if this was an equal sign, where would I find my solution? The root. So this is what's critical to me right here. What's also critical to me is, what does this say? Greater than or equal to zero. If I look at my number line, what kind of numbers are greater than or equal to zero? Positive. Oh, I need those y values to be positive. We'll look over here. Aren't all these y values positive? What are these y values in the middle? Negative. So somehow I need to be able to get this to say, this inequality here, this inequality here. These are where my y's are going to be positive. That really helps me out. So I first realized, oh, I saw where my roots were, my solutions. They're on my x line. Let me find my zeros. Remember everything algebraically. Factor. Find your zeros. If you need to cheat a little bit, you can absolutely use a calculator to help you cheat a little bit. If I graph this in my calculator and I couldn't find my zeros here, I know at least I can identify one of these. I can probably see the negative 4. Again, you're going to have to just keep resetting things here. I can see the negative 4. I can't see the other one. I have two choices. I can look at this graph. I can do a zeros on this. Second count, do a zeros on this. And go left bound, right bound. Put it right before it. Put it right after it and hit enter. Oh, I see 1.5. That must be 3 half. There's my zero. 3 half and negative 4. So don't give up on the factoring if you can't. Go to your calculator. Now, all we have to do now is test this and you graph this. Look at your table. For the left of negative 4, what's the value of y, positive or negative? Positive. positive. That's my positive. In between, negative. To the right of 3 half, well, that's greater. So I'll go to 2 and greater. Oh, positive. And I want my positive. So I, I set this piece up and this piece up. And I make my inequality. This is a great one to have to do, but it's not that bad to recognize. Um, what is the domain for this guy? Remember your domain? You're going to take F and plug it into G. Easiest way is to write the F first. Then write the G. Take all of this and plug it into this F. Because F is going into G. So it's going to be X plus 4. Oops, minus 7. So then just resolve this. X minus 3. Now what is my domain? My domain says 
I can't have a negative underneath the radical sign, so I take this and I set this greater than or equal to zero. So there's my domain. Remember you have, and I put it on your formula sheet, you have three domain restrictions. One is a denominator, cannot be zero. Another is a radical, cannot be negative. Take whatever is in the radical, set it greater than or equal to zero. The third is a radical in a denominator. Cannot be negative or cannot be zero. Set it greater than zero. Uh, okay. We okay with this? I want you to pay special attention to this. Special attention. This is darn confusing for me. What does this thing mean greater than or equal to zero? What is greater than or equal to zero? Positive numbers. So where does this thing come out to be positive? So I have no idea, so I'm going to just put it in my calculator and see what the heck is going on. So I graph this, and I say x minus 2, 1 minus 3x. Okay, and I graph it. So yeah, that makes sense to me, because what would make this jump? What would make this not continuous? What's wrong with my domain? It's restricted. Oh, I, I notice I have a fraction, right? So if I take this and I set this equal to zero, I minus one, I divide by negative three, x is equal to one-third. That means I can't use one-third, right? Mm -hmm. So shouldn't that break my graph from continuing? Isn't that what it looked like it did? So that kind of makes sense. So now, what do you think the, the greater than zero means for this? Same as it did the last time. Where are my values of y greater than zero? Where are also my values of y greater than zero? This is what I have to find. Where is this function greater than zero? Is, are these guys greater than zero down here? Is my y? Nope. Down here? Nope. So it's just this little piece of interval that I have to state. So this is how we do it. After we get it to one side, which yours will be, we take zeros of the numerator, we set the top equal to zero, we set the denominator equal to zero, and we test again with your tables. I can kind of see, it kind of helps me, I look at my table, I see, oh yeah, there's my zero, there's two, and one third, I can see on my table, but I can find it. And I look to the left of one third, and the left of one third would be any of these guys, right? Zero, they're negative. All I care about is that they're negative. Between one third and two, well, let me try one. Oh, he's a positive. To the right of two, oh, those are all negative. So where do I want it? Just this one right here. Yeah. Open and close is the problem. The numerator says, yeah, I can use that. I can use the greater than or equal to. It can be closed. But the denominator can never be closed. Because I never want a zero in my denominator, ever. So this is a denominator one. This is a numerator one. And this is my final answer. And didn't we look like that on your graph? Wasn't that that little tiny piece of space that was, great, was greater? So what you guys need to do before you panic is to graph these things. Just graph them. I don't think you had this on yours, right? Yeah. You did have this on yours? Mm -hmm. On the domain? OK, a little tricky here. I have a radical. And the radical cannot be negative. So I break up what's under my radical. It has a fraction. Under my fraction cannot be zero. But is there anything that I could put in for x that would give me a zero? No. Is there anything I could put in for x that would give me a negative? Mm -hmm. No. So my denominator is not going to bother me. Therefore, just look at your numerator. Just look at your numerator and consider that all by itself, that it's greater than or equal to zero.
and let's see what values you can use there. You can help. You can look at the graph that will help. Remember, just to graph that and look to see what you have. Um, number five. Did you get number five? Do you have number five? So you're plugging in. In this case, you're plugging in G first, taking your answer, putting it into the F. This guy, you're plugging in the F first, taking your answer, putting it into the G. Those guys, you're making the equation. Can everybody make an equation? Okay. This one, you're going to say f is 2, find the x, plug in the x of 2. So 2 plus 2 gives you 4, what's the square root of 4? 2, now that 2 goes into here. 2 squared is 4, times 3 is 12, minus 5 is 7. Stick with the parentheses, you always start at the right and you move to the left. Like that will go to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. Start at the right, move to the left, the left. Well, yeah, but when that was popular, that was like a nice little song that everybody sang with it. Not so popular anymore. Yes. Okay, so absolute value. There's two very good absolute values. Absolute value you probably had back like in September, October. Now, absolute value inequality. Whenever you have absolute value or you have a radical, your first thing is isolate that absolute value. God bless you. Get it all by itself, whether it's a radical or an absolute value. So in this case, yeah, he is all by itself. Now, that's a great or. Or, think of or is on a boat. Or is on a boat, go out. So I need to make these two lines go out. Now, once I'm isolated, I take, I take this out. I make my original equation. This is original. Now, or says, or it could be the opposite. It could be the opposite of this. Don't, because it's greater than. Well, it's greater than or equal to, but it's not less than. Misspell greater. Make it say greater or. Greater or than. So, or, go like this. Out. Now, this guy, I have to make this guy the opposite sign. So what happens when I divide by a negative one? I switch the sign. I switch the sign. So isn't one going this way now and one going this way? I mean, it could turn on me later, but I have to start like this, right? So now I solve. What happens when I divide by a negative? I switch the sign. I solve this guy. Divide by a negative, I switch the sign. Use a number line. I notice my number line says x is less than negative 2 fifths and x is greater than 6 fifths. You don't have to make me the whole number line. Just put your critical values there. Yes? Yeah. So for the, why did, you, why did you change the sign for the first equation? The first one stays exactly the same. It doesn't change. So then the second one, you made it less than. Because we take the opposite. We take the opposite of whatever this is, and because we've made it negative, we divide it by a negative one, we switch the sign. We need your, your arrows to go out the opposite way. So, so why? Very simple, very simple. Wh what could x be? Five. What else? Oh, it could be negative 5. Give me another number. 7. Oh, negative 7. So you notice, what was your critical value here? Just 3? Just 3? But how'd you get the negative? Oh, you get the absolute value. So is it negative 3 happening like this? Right? So that's where we're going at. So this one, I would say x is greater than 3. This one, I would say x is, make this negative, switch my sign. 
but she's left on the end of the tree. You're thinking that she was there, you in your head, but think it out. Right? <coughs> Work it out of that. Now, this guy, he's an and statement because he's a less than. This gives me an and statement if I did this. We have a shortcut for this. An and builds your statement. Once it's isolated, we drop it down, <coughs> and we go like this, and then take the negative over here. We got an and statement. But the problem is first, isolate this. There's a mistake. This should say seven. Um, isolate it, then drop it down. Now, solve it at the same time. Multiply everybody by three. Then, to, then subtract one from all parts. So then you should get negative 22 is less than x is less than 20. Less than each two. There's a mistake in that one. Okay? And you can you can do the end just like you did the other one, but you gotta bring it back together at the end. Go over these. Those you will definitely see again. So here's another one. Here's an or statement. How do I know this is an or? Great or. And ors go the opposite way. So it's isolated. Take it out. Use this negative. Swap the sign. You tell me when, otherwise I want to get through these so that we can get to the last one. So what am I going to do first for this? Where am I going to plug the negative 1 into? Oh. F. So I plug the negative 1 in here, and I get 1. I'm going to plug it into the G. 1 cubed is 1, minus 3, negative 2. And this one, same as the last one. Make sure you can do this. So I take the zeros of my numerator. That gives me one critical value. The zeros of my denominator. And I graph that in my calculator. And I look at this. And again, where do I want to find my y's? Wherever they're positive. Isn't there just this little one section in there again that's positive? So I test it. It's negative, positive, negative. Just this little piece right in here. The numerator will follow the open and close based on the inequality sign. The denominator always has to be open. Always. Good? Questions before we hit the last one? And you need to make sure you know the determinant. I don't care which way you factor, but make sure you're able to factor because in the past, that's a problem with a lot of you guys. It's factoring. A times C works very, very well. Everybody comfortable with A times C or no? Okay, so A times C. These are the pieces we're multiplying. So I get negative 24. Give me factors of negative 24 that will multiply to negative 24, but add up to negative 5. Such as like negative 12, positive 2. They multiply to negative 24, but they add up to negative 10. Oh, so negative 3, 8. When I multiply them, they give me negative 24. When I add them, they give me 5. Perfect. Plop an X. Take this middle term and replace it with, with this in, in any order you want to do it. I'll, I'll do it the other way. 6x squared minus 3x plus 8x minus 4. You're just removing this and replacing it with that. 
Now group the terms. What can I take out of 6x squared and 3x? 3x. What's left? x. Just go like this if you have to. x minus 1. What can I take out of 8x minus 4 so that it looks like this? Uh, well, what did he share? Oh, I forgot the 2. Sorry. I forgot the 2x. What did they share? 4. So if I take out a 4, aren't I left with 2x minus 1? Now, there's my common factor. What's left here, 3x plus 4, is my other one. That's my other factor. Make sure you can factor them. Oh, I forgot, sorry, I forgot to factor out the x first. We were just able to kind of do that part. And then just bring them all back. Determinant, make sure you can find a determinant algebraically. Don't put it in your calculator. Show me the work. Remember, multiply up here, minus, multiply here. And your last one, I think, is the systems of equations. Right? And everybody's okay with the systems of equation? Okay. In this one, I know this. There's no Z in the second one, right? Mm -hmm. So if I combine 1 and 3, and I eliminate Z, won't that help me out? Yeah. But now here's the problem. They don't match up. So I need to make them the same coefficient, but opposite signs. So... Find the first multiple. You can multiply one by the negative and then the, the, I mean, if you have to, but if, like it was a two and an eight, I could do like this one by four. Figure out how to get there. This one by negative five, this one by positive three. Keep track of this. Now combine this one with this one and eliminate another variable. And I eliminated the x. You can eliminate whichever one you want. And then back substitute to get your solution. Guys, make sure you study these. Is there anybody that has a question? Mm, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I have all my questions. I have all your questions. Uh, so, Monday, first, I think first and second period, yeah.